In today's episode, I'm going to talk all about some new fabrics at Cloth Edit and give you lots and lots of inspiration for them. Hello and welcome back to Cloth Edit. I'm Gabrielle. Yes, this, well, actually it was last weekend that I launched the Atelier Brunette collection at Cloth Edit and it's been going very well, even though it's a bit early seasonally um, for the fabrics. But um, yes, yeah, so I want to talk all about those today and um, more importantly, just general inspiration for sewing these fabrics and I've got some great ideas that I love to share and I also have lots of um, pattern ideas uh, that m most of them I stock at Cloth Edit or I'm getting them in. Um, there is an exception <clears throat> but I hope you are very well on this weekend and I hope you're getting a little bit of sewing time in if that's what you need. I am very very close to a thousand subscribers now so please subscribe because when I hit 1000 I will be doing a little giveaway so make sure you subscribe that would be lovely. Right so the Atelier Brunette collection now as you know, I don't stock many branded fabrics. I tend to curate my own collection. For this winter, I'm not getting any wools in. Um, it doesn't really fit in with my collection generally. I've tried it. And, but what does work really well is denim. So I'll be getting more denim in for winter. What I really wanted was corduroy and velvet, two fabrics I just love. And Atelier Brunette just came up trumps with these fabrics. Mm -hmm. This season um, is forest green, the focus is sort of forest green and rust and also a maple color as well as an off-white and black. I didn't get all those colors in both the corduroy and velvet um, but I've selected a number that I think you'll love. So I'll start with the corduroy. It's a lovely weight. It's 30 GSM and it's lovely and wide. It's 150 centimeters wide. Um, now the colors in the range are off-white, maple, forest green and rust. They're beautiful quality cords. The, what I really liked is that it's a little bit different. So as you know, cord is, is sort of measured in whales um, and the whales or the lines in this corduroy um, there are two sizes so I'm just going from memory I did measure them but I think one's like two and a half millimeters or and one's about four millimeters so you get these two different sized whales um, I've given a few sewing tips in the product pages on the website um, and just very general I, I'd start with a size 14 or 16 needle that's what I would start with and um, see how I went. I'd certainly up my stitch length a little bit. Um, what else? Take care when you're cutting out um, with the nap. So corduroy has a nap. If, if you run your hand down the corduroy and it feels smooth, so that's the nap running down, that's generally the direction that you want to use unless you're wanting to play with different textures and directions of the cord. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I would suggest a walking foot. I mean, a lot of machines have that dual feed system built in now um, if your machine's a bit newer and a bit fancier but other than that a walking foot might help you because when you put those right sides together there is a tendency for some shift because of the pile um, <clears throat> spur so a walking foot will help you out there but other than that 
Um, I would, you know, I, I use lots of pins when I'm sewing, so that's what I would do. Even basting, if it's really shifting around for you, would be a good idea. So I'll pop my Pinterest um, address here so you can go and investigate because I've created mood boards or, or just boards for the corduroy and velvet and there's actually there one there for twill prints if you um, bought some of the twill fabric or were interested in my linen twill collection there's lots of twill inspiration there as well um, so the corduroy mood board, I've just got my laptop right here so I can remember all of the, um, all of the images. So what I love, and Kate Blanchett is doing it in one of these images, is the jacket, the matching jacket and trousers with a white t-shirt and trainers. It just looks really brilliant, um, even without the jacket. The, the trousers and the white t-shirt and, and trainers are going to look really fresh. Um, the other sort of suit that I, I <clears throat> pinned just because I found it so interesting, it would be something to play around with, is the suit, and it's in a caramel colour in, in this image, it has a lovely puff sleeve so it's buttoned right to the neck and has a little bit of sleeve and then it's quite fitted so I think that's really interesting to play would be interesting to play with as well um, getting a bit of height in a sleeve and um, the other thing to inspire you I've got some a boiler suit um, and instead of a puff sleeve, it's got fullness around the cuff. So I thought that was really interesting. And then there are um, some dungarees. And I think both images I have are styled with sweaters. But you could certainly have, um, you know, in early autumn um, or going into spring, just a t-shirt or, you know, a, a shirt underneath, sleeves rolled up that sort of look. There's an, also an image that's made out of patchwork. So, you know, keep all those scraps of your of the velvet and the corduroy because it's it's um I think that patchwork look with both of these fabrics looks really great. Um as far as jackets, a lot of the designs I've pinned are really close to that jean jacket style so that the classic sort of metal buttons um, usually the buttons going up to the top to the neckline um, there's that classic shearling look so shearling upper collar and facing also if you're going into autumn winter uh, there's a, at least one image that I have of a quilted um, corduroy jacket which I love and um, also the whole um, patchwork look again, not just in the dungarees, but I've got a picture of a patchwork jacket as well. Um, one of my favorite pins actually too, they're from the Prada range. I'm not sure of the year of this collection, but I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I love it. Um, both the jacket and the skirt have leather trim and if you look closely at the skirt I love this detail that they've had there's this tab that they've sewn into the bottom of the pocket and it comes up over the pocket and it snaps closed with the po um, pocket flap um, and both the pockets on the jacket and the skirt are trimmed with leather. I even love how the shape of the pocket flap is just a little bit unique and um, asymmetrical. All those little things, I love looking at designers um, and what they've done. 
So skirts. Skirts would be another fantastic idea for corduroy. So in these images I've got A-line skirts, you know, mini and midi. There's also one really gorgeous skirt that is a little bit gathered at the waistband. Not much but just enough and uh, I love how all these have styled with socks and boots. Um, as I mentioned earlier, keep those scraps because I've found some great images of corduroy caps, um, hats rather, and bags. And corduroy is perfect for, you know, because it's a bit sturdier, it's perfect for those accessories. So yes, I hope you found my corduroy inspo inspiring. So next up is velvet and I was really excited to receive this. I adore this velvet. Why I love it is that, I mean, for some velvet reads um, evening wear, um, but of course it makes beautiful jackets and people would, you know, you could certainly have an evening jacket made of velvet and I've got inspo pictures for that. But this velvet isn't your high pile, you know, silk blend velvet. It's got a really short pile and another, um, another way that it's Atelier Brunette have taken it out of that evening realm and to sort of put it firmly into the day wear realm is it has this self plaid pattern in it and it's sensational it's really gorgeous and um, so it's a bit it's um a little bit lighter than the corduroy it's about 270 gsm it's still nice and wide it's 140 centimeters wide it's a cotton lycra blend so it's got two or three i forget uh, percentage points of lycra in it just so it has a bit of give for your skirts and pants and also jackets making them making any fitted designs just a lot more comfortable um, it has nap just like the corduroy um, but it's not an obvious nap so if you've ever had one of you know a, a velvet item that's made in the a plusher velvet um, if you run your hand down it sort of becomes lighter and shinier and then you rub it up the nap against the nap or have the nap going up rather and it becomes darker and it's not quite as smooth as you run your hand up so with this there is that nap but it's hardly noticeable but so. you would so but you would still need to watch that nap when you're cutting out um so keep that in mind um again just like the corduroy because it has a little bit of a, a pile and then just the nature of the fabric when you put right sides together it might shift so again the walking foot would be great other than that just lots of pinning or basting good old-fashioned basting i'm doing more of actually never thought i'd say that but yes basting um, and as far as needles, because it's got stretch in it, look, I did a bit of research and I, and someone suggested, um, number 12 stretch, but I'd probably start at number 14 and give that a test first. And then, you know, I'd try 12 and 14. That's what I'd do to be diplomatic. Right now, some velvet inspiration right i had so much fun looking at all these velvet garments um i'm going to start off with some ways to embellish or add something to a velvet garment now the first one is quilting now the fabric already has well this atelier brunette fabric has that self plaid stripe so that actually could be really interesting to play with um, by quilting it underneath. So if you added a layer of, um, you know, 
cotton flannel or some kind of batting, thin batting underneath. You could really have fun by quilting along those lines or just creating a classic diamond pattern across the whole thing. So I thought that could be really interesting. And so I've got a few images here. There's an Alberta Ferretti um, jacket and this is from 2015. Uh, it's just stunning. So I mean that's you know exceptional. Then there's an anthropology quilted velvet jacket and this is really interesting because it combines knit fabric with the velvet. So there's knit cuffs and bands. There's exceptional images here um, by um, garments by Burberry. Beautiful plum and purple um, jacket and coat. Beautiful quilting. I love that jacket, how it has that flap um, with the button. I think that would be something you could certainly draft yourself into your, you know, draft into your favorite um, jacket pattern. Um, other ideas would be to embroider. So if you have uh, a machine that does embroidery, have a play with that. There's a gorgeous bomber jacket that I've pinned with embroidered um, embellishment and yours doesn't have to be all over like this but it yeah I just think it's um provides lots of great inspiration there's also a fuller more duster jacket style by free people and I love this embroidery and they've combi combined that with trim as well and it just looks fantastic the um, I've got a couple of pictures of this sensational Dior patchwork velvet wrap coat. This is a 2017 coat. And again, keep, keep those scraps. Um, how amazing to have a, um, you know, to work in velvet, even if the whole jacket wasn't in velvet, just incorporating patches of velvet just to give um, texture different textures I think that's a great idea um, now I mentioned one or showed one free people duster but there are some other plain long dusters that I've got um, pinned for you and they just look fantastic just worn really casually um, now we move on, on to classic jackets and this this category <laughs> is very full there's a beautiful black Gucci jacket with a black trim that could be like a grow grain ribbon or something like that just offering the different texture and different colored blacks there's stunning temperley uh, jacket in green gorgeous Dolce Gabbana jacket in a green also with sensational lapels and a gorgeous Stella McCartney jacket as well oh, speaking of Stella McCartney there's a beautiful it's one of my favorites it's a fantastic more casual I guess it's the style of a jeans jacket it's just straight through and they've belted it so there's a bit of hardware on the belt gorgeous um, buttons down the front and I just love all the pockets I think they look fantastic right three piece suits now I've got three classics here Kate Blanchett's green suit just looks sensational and I love the shape of the, the vest that's underneath that. There's a beautiful three-piece suit by Al Detroit. Then there's a gorgeous Ralph Lauren ensemble also. So the pattern inspiration I have is endless really. 
I've just focused on some, just some of the indie pattern brands that I've got in stock with the exception of one which I'll talk about at the end. So first of all, I'd love you to check out the Avid Seamstress, the classic blazer and the city trousers. I think these two would be fantastic together as a suit or just as separates. Um, <clears throat> Atelier Scamet. Now I'm out of stock of this pattern but there are more on the way. The Tempo Jacket. I just love this, love the pockets in it and I can see this in that off-white corduroy. It would look sensational. Closet Core. I would recommend having a look at the Sienna Maker and the Blanca boiler suit, the Jenny wide leg trousers and overalls, it's one pattern, and the Jessica blazer. I'm out of the Jessica at the moment, but I have the others in stock. The next one is good old Tilly and the Buttons. Now, I, by the time you see this, I will have Tilly and the Buttons um, patterns and I'm really excited. I held off for two years before I got them um, because I was trying to sort of curate something that was a bit different um, but I couldn't resist any longer. Some of the newer patterns are just too good and I want to make them. So Tilly and the Buttons, the Clio um, dungarees that I think everyone on YouTube has made, um, that would be great. The uh, Friday Pattern Company, there is quite a few here. The Heather Blazer, the Ilford and the Cambria. The Cambria Duster, the Ilford jeans jacket style um, and the Heather classic blazer. I'm out of the Heather but I've got the other two. The next pattern brand I'd love to highlight for making, playing around with cord and velvet is the Maison Ferve brand and there are many. So for pants try the Bella. They have a little elastic part at the back and they're tapered and a little bit cropped. Um, the Brooklyn, which is one of their newer patterns. High-waisted, um, fuller leg, really cool. Their styling is fantastic. Um, gives you a really good idea of what you could do with these trousers and how you can wear them. So check out their Manhattan blazer classic and the pillar jacket which is on my make nine would be fantastic in either the velvet or the corduroy <clears throat> so next i would have a look at paper cut patterns i wanted to highlight the juno jacket just got a little bit of extra you know style lines to that jacket other than that the paper cut pattern stacker jacket pattern fantastic now this jacket doesn't look anything like the images I've pinned but it deserves mention because it's just different and I think that fold det detail in the sleeve would be really cool in the velvet because you'd have this contrasting um, you know shine it would create a really interesting effect with velvet, I think. And speaking of Pauline Alice, her latest collection is a three-piece suit. Well, her sample actually, her samples are in this sensational corduroy. So she's not doing this collection in printed patterns, so I can't get them. So you'll have to go to Pauline Alice straight to the source to get the PDFs and they are just wonderful. So there's the Dolt Blazer and it's a lined double breasted jacket. It's got really high peak lapels which are gorgeous. There's back vents so it's really comfortable for sitting um, and it's got just lovely little details. There's faux, faux welt breast pocket 
to go with that you've got the Rige trousers they're fantastic wide leg um, trouser they've got a fly front and the key feature is this closure it has a d-ring and button closure the vest or waistcoat is the Costera design and I love this again it's lined that blazer is lined if I didn't mention that um, and it's got darts for shaping uh, a faux welt pocket buttoned up the front what I love about it though is and some of the inspiration shots have this look is that it buttons quite high so you can wear nothing underneath it um, so that's really lovely I love that so they're my very quick um, but you know many pattern suggestions for the corduroy and velvet phew so I have a feeling this has gone on for longer than I thought I hope it was interesting I had a lot of fun going through um, Pinterest but I will leave it there and I'll be back very soon because I have a feeling I'll have lots of um, new things to talk to you about so have a wonderful weekend and take care bye bye